at the forest yeah. island though. I know, yeah, I know. <laughs> I didn't think about it. I didn't think about it. So the first question, tell me what your, your, your grandmother, is it grandmother or great grandmother? Well, it must be great grandmother. That came I as, don't even know none of them. Right. You know, I only knew my mother. I didn't know my grandmother then was I don't know if she was dead. Oh. Yeah. I didn't even know which it was my grandmother or my great grandmother that went <clears> and then then she slave. Right. To Guyana. Right. My yeah. father came from Canton. Never spoke a word of English, but he had money. And they made a match with my mom. Yeah. yeah. So so it was an arranged marriage. Yeah. But your your father was already married. Your grand Yeah, yeah. he had a wife in China. Yeah. Oh. But you know they were <clears throat> they're allowed more than one wife, as many as you can support. Mm -hmm. There's wife number mm -hmm. one, and wife number two, wife number three. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's how it was. And the wife number one, she was the boss, right? Yeah. And the others are under her. But it was something that we're not used to. Concubines. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Did he ever not go back? Huh? Did he ever go back to China? No. So he married her and left her in China and came? Yeah, but uh, I don't know, we didn't know about him. My yeah. mother never spoke Chinese. So, and it was not like today where you have schools. He didn't speak enough English to teach us Chinese. Right. She didn't know Chinese at all. The teachers, you know, well, she's and you know, if the mother knows the language, the kids will learn yeah. because she's with them all day. But we never learned Chinese. What did she speak? English. Oh, English. Okay. English. It was a British colony. Oh, of course. Guyana, British Guyana. It was British Guyana then. Yeah. And that's it. Mm -hmm. That's you know. Life, life then was not as it is today. It's a different thing entirely. What's the, I asked my grandmother this, what was the biggest change that you, that you noticed in your lifespan? I asked my granny that question and she was like, her answer was uh, trans, transportation. She said yes. it was the biggest, That's the right. biggest thing. Because I never traveled from Grand if we can go to any other country. Yeah. We had a train that goes and stops at different little places, Buxton and all these places, but uh, I never knew about an airplane yeah. or a ship, yeah. you know, so yeah. travel is one. Yeah. And then they had other things in the house. And yeah. like I told you, we didn't have a toilet in the house. It was in the, it's an outhouse yeah. when I was a girl. And that was in, well, I was born in 1921. Yeah. And that's about what? He's eight years ago. Yeah, 81, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just turned 81. Eight so. years ago. Yeah. And I was about five, six growing up. There was nothing like that. Yeah. But, uh, wow. We were 13 of us. 13? Yeah. I didn't know 13. Very... Oh my goodness. Uh, but nine, nine was stayed alive. They were, we had nine. Four deaths in right. the family. Right. Died very young, yeah. you know, and uh, stayed at nine for the longest. Where were you in the thirteen? Uh, the I was the, the third, but the first died, mm -hmm. and then the second my brother in New York, mm -hmm. and I'm the third. Mm -hmm. But um, if I if I ever should be born again, I don't want to be the third of <laughs> thirteen children. I want to be the last because the last three got the best. And to me, they're the worst. They turned out the worst. <laughs> we had work, and you know, you look for everything you. that we had until yeah. they were born. Okay. And life was different. We moved to Georgetown, and then we saw what was life. Yeah. You know, electricity. Yeah. We had a lamp. Oh, it was so backward in in Guyana. It was Guyana. Wow. Very well. It wasn't backward because we didn't know any better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm. it didn't affect us in any way. We used a bicycle when we even went to Georgetown. Who had a car? Yeah. Yeah. We used bicycles and we had fun with bicycles. Yeah. Wherever we go on weekends, we used to go all over the place riding. And each one of us, we have a boyfriend and yeah. he would pull us along and we go riding. And it was just fun. We never go to the movies because no. we didn't miss it. No, we didn't know that. In uh, Indiana. Uh, in schooling, what kind of schooling did you have? Uh, in school, up to sixth standard. That's and then you, there you could get, a, you, even then, you could get any government job in those days. You didn't need any higher education. How old was 6th standard? Um, would be about 13, yeah. 12 to 13 years. 
is you is six standard, mm -hmm. but right. there was not no no my my brother had high school because my father being Chinese, girls will need education. Right. Right? The boys need education. The girls get married and they don't they have a husband to take care of them. Mm -hmm. So my, my brother, the the second well, my first brother in New York, he went to high school. He was the only one that had a high school education. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because there were girls coming after and the boy was after me, he died. So the girls didn't need any education harder right. than that. Right. And that and that was it. So tell me again about Papa and how you met him. Oh, how I met Papa. He used to come into this, this shop that I, we had, mom had. The bake shop. And yes, a little cake shop like selling milks and sweet drinks and things like that. And Dee and I used to take turns and running the shop and going and staying in it. And he used to come in, he used to go to the movies like three times a day, you know. And he would come in, get a glass of milk, have something to eat. And then we start talking and then told me his wife was alive and he's expecting his wife and son any time and I didn't think of anything because you know we were just talking but he kept coming and coming and he never said anything to me yeah. and I said well he's expecting his wife well, why is he coming here but he never he lives right around the corner from the shop and that he was expecting his wife and the first time she didn't come because he sent the money for a ticket for the boy and she sent, said the boy had an ear infection or something and he couldn't come and that wasn't said, that wasn't true though. No, because Misha said to, to that Papa that she he probably heard, and uh, she loaned the money to some family. They never got it back. So mm -hmm. then she later on he had to work again in Guyana. And when he arrived in Guyana, he didn't know a word of English. Mm -hmm. I mean that's what friends told me after, and how work he had worked very hard to send for her because mm -hmm. he arrived in Guyana. That's uh, the time when they were. You know, they were, all the boats were turning away. The people what, what, from coming, yeah. running from the war, the Jews that were running away yeah. from the war, yeah. when they saw the programs yeah. and the different things that were happening, and Papa left Russia because he didn't want to be go back. He didn't want to go back into the army, mm -hmm. and he had to do his army because he, mm -hmm. it was compulsory. Right, right, right. He went. He he left everything and ran. How did he get out? Uh, he went to Paris and then from there, well, he went before the war started. Mm. He didn't run during so the went war. As a but then they, they were not taking the Jews that were leaving. Right? A lot of Jews were leaving Europe, right? They were using, mm -hmm. leaving Russia because they saw things coming. Mm -hmm. And he left his wife and child and his partner and they had a cinema. Mm -hmm. And he came and the, wherever, wherever they landed, they wouldn't let them go land. He went to Trinidad and that's where he went into Trinidad. And there were all these Jewish committees in these islands waiting to greet these Jews that were going. Canada was one country that sent away back a lot of ships wow. with a lot of people, mm -hmm. Jewish people, immigrants, and they sent them back to their death. Yeah. And anyway, he so, traveled from. He didn't know he was going. He didn't know English. Yeah. So what yeah. happened? Uh, what happened the second? The second time he sent for her. The second time he sent for her, is, he sent a ticket. And he booked his ticket through Bookers Guyana. You know, we got back that money years later after we were married, and Abraham was born. And all my, I think, four, I had four children before the, the company, Bookers Guyana, had an agency in Trinidad. And they called him up and they said, Mr. Truss, we could trace, we could trace your money because the ship, the, the office in Italy was blown up. He had his receipt for the ticket that he had paid so many years ago. Mm -hmm. And when we went to Trinidad, we found the agency in Trinidad and we went to them, shipping agency, Saguenay Terminal. Yeah, and by that, he got back that, he got back a refund for her ticket. Wow. Yeah. But then the, um, he, he, the second time he booked her ticket, the ship was to leave, he came, she came with the boy to Italy. And that was the day Italy went to war. They sent him all back into Russia. And that was the end. What happened to her? Uh, he didn't know what happened until one day he got a letter from the father-in-law saying that, from the British consul in um, Kubitschek, saying that his wife had died, but his father-in-law and child needs help. Mm -hmm. And he went to the Barbados, um, British government then, British colony then, 
and he got a permit to send money out through the Red Cross. And he sent the money every year, when he went, he was sending the money. And one year later, all the checks came back from the Red Cross saying they're very sorry that they couldn't find her. They said they no, couldn't find him, the boy, mm -hmm. because they were running from town to town and the Red Cross have no knowledge or no record of where they are. So he got back all those checks after a year. How old was Misha when they were doing that? There were uh, money orders, no, there weren't checks. No, there were money, there were sort of money yeah. order mm -hmm. that you can send checks then, sorry. They were like yeah, money, yeah. You send it through the, dra through the government, yeah. you have to send these little the, the drafts. Uh, Misha, I think when he left, sorry. When he left Misha, Misha was two years old, but all the years that passed, Misha got a little older. I don't right. know how old Misha was at that time, really. Wow. But Misha had a hard life too, oh, you know, yeah. because his grandfather probably died, and mm -hmm. we, could, we, couldn't, we didn't hear a thing about him for years. Yeah. And it's only by chance we lived in Trinidad that we heard um, from a friend, a, not, a Jew, not a Jewish guy, that told Papa that. Um, and he heard that Misha is alive. Mm -hmm. So that's how they got in contact. Uh, yeah. Trying to start corresponding with Misha, but not directly. Mm -hmm. It would go through someone else, and then the letter would go to Misha. But then they were censored in those days. Yeah. And everyone told him, Michael, you shouldn't write these things about Israel and encouraging him that he can come to Israel because He's your letters are censored. And it's true, it just stopped coming, no letters were coming, no letters going back, and mm -hmm. that was it. Until years later again, then we heard that Misha was alive. And, mm -hmm. uh, so, but you two, you two started to date after he found out his wife died, and yeah. why, why did you break up with him? Because um, I wasn't going to live with him. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm from a small town. And we knew everybody, everybody knows everybody. I said, no, you know, if you leave me as a kept woman, it's crazy, you know. And we separated. I went to visit my sister in Amsterdam. When I time I came back, he was waiting for me. <laughs> but we got married on the condition that um, he would go back to Russia after the war. I said, fine, you can go back to Russia. Because no marriage contract is forever, you know. It, never, it can't last forever. Mm -hmm. That's what... But then Abraham came along, and he never went back to Russia. Four <laughs> others came after him. <laughs> he never talked about going back to Russia until we went back together. <laughs> and when did you convert <clears throat> to...? Uh, well, in Barbados, I mean, in Guyana, we couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Well, when we went to Barbados, we went to Venezuela and had a conversion done, and I had... We went through the whole thing, the mikvah, the rabbi, and the, the, the you, you know what, 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 you know about it, how you do it? What? Well, well, you have to have all your nails cut, no jewels, your, everything clean, and no, no clips or anything in your hair. And you go naked into this place, this is a little square pit, and have a little pool, like a little, and you go in down the steps, and the meanwhile, we were in Venezuela, and I had to be studying this Hebrew, you know, what I have to say when mm -hmm. the rabbi, he's outside. There's only a lady with me inside. And then they duck you three times, and each time you come up, you got to say something. <laughs> so I did it in Venezuela. Yeah. And then Dad had to go through it because he was born after you converted. So they tell, told him oh, he all, had all to. The, all the boys. Yeah. Because they weren't circumcised. Oh, those were the, my, my sons. Yeah. They all had to go over the whole thing because they, they were circumcised at birth by a doctor. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the eight days. Yeah. Then they had a crazy rabbi from New York. I wasn't even there at the time. I left. I said, I'm not going to stay. If the boys want to do it, it's up to them. Yeah. I'm not telling them what to do. They're old enough, and if they want to please you, but... Um, Said this moil from New York came, and he said they're not Jewish if it's not done the right way. <laughs> and I, I just left with Manya, and I left him there. <laughs> when I came back, and 
he did the thing on the beach somewhere on the beach with yeah. all the that, boys. Oh, that, yeah, got there naked. Yeah, Abe was eighteen. Yeah, <laughs> and Dad says one of the most humiliating things of his life because he shaved his head. And he yeah, would work in the bank. Yeah, he shaved his head and then and then he's got to go naked to to the point where he can go under the water, and it was low but tide, was <laughs> and he had to go out forever walking. He said it was just it was a yeah, horrible experience. Yeah, I wasn't experience. there. I yeah. said I refuse. I yeah. don't want to say no. I don't want to say yes. The boys are big. And they're old enough. Let them decide what they want to do with their life. You know. Yeah. <laughs> and that is how it happened. One more question. What What made you move to um, What made you move to Barbados? Because um, of a good friend of Dad's. He lived in Guyana. Mm -hmm. We knew him from there, and he was going for an operation, the corps. And uh, he asked Dad to come to run the store for him. And after that, he said, stay in Barbados, you know, yeah. and you can stay and work with me. And that's how we went to Barbados. Wow. And spent over 30 years in Barbados, made good friends. Yeah. And as the kids started going to school in Toronto, and all the parents started moving to Toronto, and we were rather lucky because we had the same old friends back in um, Barbados that all moved here. So we yeah. didn't have to make new friends. Yes, yeah. yeah, so you came a big... Yeah, yeah. 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 Did you come at the same time as, as Dina and Amy? No, a few years after. A couple years after. Oh, a few years after. Yeah. Yeah. Dina, they left before. Because her mom, your dad came over mm -hmm. before. Yeah. yeah. His open heart was in 79. Papa's. Yeah, yes. Yeah, which was two years after we moved there. Yeah, yeah. because... um, And you know that lady let Misha no, no, out? No, no. Uh, no? No. No, so. Papa... We were in Barbados still when Papa had his heart. So yeah. Too. Uh, oh. He was only sick. He was. It was even before that. Yeah, his um, he, his operation was like seventy six. Then. Oh, I no, don't. we came in seventy. We came in seventy seven. Well, no, he was like seventy five. Seventy five. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't. I can't remember that. I I don't even remember now, the date. But anyway, I know Michael was living in your mom's mm -hmm. apartment. Your mom, her mom wasn't here yet. No, none of us were here yet. No. I think it was in the 60s, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Give me a smile, Gran. the 70s? Mm -hmm. Well, because Misha came... Give me a smile, Gran. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Look at that one. Oh, that's nice. Good. I'm out of tape. <laughs>